Dr. Blue Rinse Bunny, are you ready? Then what are we waiting for? It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 10, lesson number 5. Moving on to look at the identity matrix. So what is the identity matrix? Well, this matrix here, matrix I, is the two by two identity matrix. And that is one when all the entries in the lead diagonal are one, so going from top left to bottom right, and all the other entries are zero. That there is known as the two by two identity matrix. Let's say we've got some other matrix, matrix A. Let that be just a general two by two matrix. So we're gonna have four entries. Let's just call them A, B, C, and D. What we can do is we can take the identity matrix and we can multiply it by matrix A. The identity matrix is a two by two matrix. Matrix A is a two by two matrix, so we can multiply them together. If we do multiply them, the result will also be a two by two matrix. To work out this entry here in the first row and the first column, we multiply the first row by the first column. So we'd have one times A add zero times C. In order to work out the next entry, this entry here is in the first row in the second column, so we multiply the first row by the second column. So 1 times B add 0 times D. Moving down a row to work out this entry in the second row, first column, we multiply the second row by the first column. So 0 times A add 1 times C. And to work out this entry here, which is in the second row and the second column, we multiply the second row by the second column. So it's zero times B add one times D. If we do that, then what do we end up getting? Well, we end up getting back to A, B, C, D. In other words, we get back to just matrix A. Similarly, if instead we flipped that around and we had matrix A multiplied by the identity matrix, so A times I, well that would be A, B, C, D multiplied by the one zero, zero, one. Similarly, if we did that, well we would end up with one times A and zero times B, we'd have zero times A and one times B, and we'd have one times C and zero times D, and zero times C and one times D, just working it out the same way. And if we do that, well that really again just gives us A, B, C, D. And again, we're just back to A. What this means is really that for any two by two matrix, if we have the identity matrix times A, well, that's just going to give us matrix A. If we have A times the identity matrix, again, that will just give us A. So this means then that the identity matrix behaves just like the number one. You know, when you multiply by the number one, whatever you're multiplying just stays as it is. And it's the same here for matrices with the identity matrix. Similarly, if you have the three by three identity matrix, well, that behaves the exact same way. The leading diagonal is all going to be one and all the other entries are zero. Let's try some examples then looking at the identity matrix. So example one, given the two by two matrix A, which is two, negative one, three and five, find the values of integers P and Q such that A squared equals P times A plus Q times I, and hence express the matrix A cubed in the form XA plus YI, where X and Y are integers. So to do this, first of all, well, we've got to find the values of P and Q such that A squared equals PA plus QI. So let's find out A squared first of all. So A squared is matrix A times matrix A. So it's two times ne two, negative one, three, five, multiplied by the two, negative one, three, five. If we do that, well, matrix A is a two by two matrix. This is a two by two matrix. So we know that they can be multiplied together and the result will be a two by two matrix. If you're unsure about that, just look back to the previous lesson on matrix multiplication. So to find this entry here in the first row in the first column, we multiply the first row by the first column. Doing that, and we end up with 2 times 2 add negative 1 times 3. To get this entry here, which is in the first row in the second column, we would multiply the first row by the second column. So it's 2 times negative 1 add negative 1 times 5. And that will give us just this here. To get this entry here in the second row first column, we multiply the second row 
by the first column. So it's 3 times 2, add 5 times 3. And to get this entry here in the second row, second column, multiply the second row, the 3, 5, by the second column, negative 1, 5. So we'd have 3 times negative 1, add 5 times 5. If we do that, that gives us for a squared, 1, negative 7, 21, 22. We know that a squared equals pa plus qi. So we can set that up and say, okay, so matrix a squared, which is the 1, negative 7, 21, 22, is equal to, well, it's p times matrix a, so it's going to be p times that 2, negative 1, 3, 5 plus Q times I. And what's I? The identity matrix. Perfect. So it's Q times the 1001. We can take this right hand side and we can say, okay, well, we're taking matrix A and we're multiplying it by the scalar, whatever P is. And when we have that, we take each of these entries and multiply them by P. In other words, 2 would go to 2P, negative 1 would go to negative 1P, 3 would go to 3p, and 5 would go to 5 times p, so 5p. q times the identity matrix, where we're taking every entry here and multiplying by q. So 1 times q is q, 0 times q is still 0, 0 times q is 0, and 1 times q would give you q. Because we have this right-hand side, and we have one matrix add another matrix, they're both 2 by 2 matrices, so it's the same order, well, we can then add them. So we want to add our entries. So we can say then that we've got this 2p and we're going to add on q. So the first entry here will be 2p plus q. We can then say we've got this negative p and we're adding on 0. So that will be negative p plus 0 or just negative p. We can take the other entries and we've got this 3p and we're going to be adding on 0. So that will just give us 3p. And we've got this 5p here and we're going to add on q. So that will give us this matrix. So we know then that a squared, the 1, negative 7, 21, 22, is going to be equal to this, 2p plus q, negative p, 3p, and 5p plus q. We're still wanting to find the values of p and q, so how could we then do this? What would you do next? Amy? Perfect. You're perfectly right, Amy. Yes, you can equate the entries. Because these matrices are equal, they're only equal if they're the same order and all of the entries are equal. So from here, well, we know then that this negative P must be equal to negative 7. Similarly, we know the 21 must be equal to 3P. So find something just one with one unknown. So here you've got P and Q. We know that would be equal to the 1. We know the 5P plus Q is equal to the 22. But just take one unknown. So 3P equals 21 or negative P equals negative 7. And if we have that, when we equate the entries, we can say if negative P is negative 7, well, we know P equals 7. It would have worked if we also had the 3P equals 21. Divide by 3, so P again equals 7. We can then take one of the other entries and we can say, okay, well, we know 2p plus q must equal 1. But because we know p, p is 7, well, 2 times 7 plus q equals 1. And then from there, well, we know 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract 14 from both sides and q would equal negative 13. Hence, p equals 7 and q equals negative 13. So we were asked to find the values of p and q and we have just done that. Afterwards, it said, hence, express the matrix A cubed in the form XA plus YI, where X and Y are integers. So for this, well, we know that A squared equals, remember, A squared was PA plus QI, and we just found the values of P and Q. So we know then that A squared equals 7A, because we're replacing P with 7, so it's 7 times A, and Q was negative 13, so we take away 13I. How then would we find A cubed? Well, we know A cubed is going to be the matrix A squared times A, or A times A squared. So in other words, we would have matrix A multiplied by A squared. But remember, A squared is 7A take away 13I. So we can set that up. If we then multiply out the brackets, well, we'd have an A times 7A, which will give us 7A squared. And if we have 13i multiplied by a, well, remember, going back 
to what we had just on the previous page or a couple of pages ago. Remember AI, if we multiply matrix A by the identity matrix, it stays as matrix A. So 13 times AI, well the AI would just stay as A, so it'd be 13 A. And that's because AI equals A. From there, where do we go next? Well, we know A squared, just up here, A squared is 7A take away 13I. So we can again replace that. So that becomes seven times the 7A take away 13I. And we're still taking away 13A. Multiply out the brackets again. So seven times 7A will give us 49A. Seven times 13I will give us the 91I. And we're subtracting that. And we're still taking away this 13A. How many A's have we got? Well, 49 take away 13 will give us 36A, and we're taking away the 91I, which means then that we have it in the form something A plus something I, so we can say then that that would be A cubed equals 36A take away 91I. So we've really got the value of X to be 36, and the value of Y to be that negative 91. Example two, let A be this three by three matrix, which is two, two, negative four, negative four, two, negative four, two, negative one, five, and matrix B be this three by three matrix, which is one, zero, one, negative one, zero, two, three, four, and zero, one, two. Part A show that AB equals KI for some real number K, and B hence obtain the matrix A squared B. So first of all, well, we're wanting to work out AB, so it's A times B. Well, matrix A is a three by three matrix. Matrix B is also a three by three matrix. Because the numbers in the middle are equal, we've got a three and three, it means we can work out A times B. So we've got matrix A multiplied by matrix B. The results, well, we know the result is just the other numbers, that is three and three, so the result will be a three by three matrix. So it will look just like this. So going through this to work out this entry here in the first row and the first column, we want to multiply our first row by our first column. So it's two times one, and on two times two, add negative four times zero. To work out the next entry, this entry here in the first row and the second column, we want to multiply the first row by the second column. So it's two times negative one, add two times three, add negative four times one. To work out the next entry in the first row, so it's the first row third column, so we multiply the first row by the third column. So two times zero, add two times four, add negative four times two. Moving down a row, well this entry here is in the second row, first column, so we multiply the second row by the first column. So it's negative four times one, add two times two, add negative four times zero. To get the next entry, this entry here is the second row, second column. So second row, second column. So we multiply the second row by the second column. So it's negative four times negative one, add two times three, add negative four times one. If we keep moving along, well, we've got this here, which is the second row, third column. So we multiply the second row by the third column. So negative four times zero, add two times four, add negative four times two. Moving down to the third row, so third row, first column, so multiply the third row by the first column. So third row, first column. So we've got two times one, add negative one times two, add five times zero. Moving in, we've got the third row and the second column, so third row by the second column, if we multiply them, third row, second column. So we've got two times negative one, add negative one times three, add five times one. And finally, we've got the third row, third column. So we multiply this third row by the third column. So that gives us two times zero, add negative one times four, add five times two. If you work that out, it works out to be six zero zero for the first row. Second row would be zero six zero, and the third row is zero zero six. Wait a minute, what can you do with that, Amna? Perfect, you could take six out, really, as a common factor, just the way you would do with brackets. If you take out that six, well, it'll give us six times one zero zero, zero one zero, and zero zero one. Woo! And what would you call this matrix here with the leading diagonal as ones and all the other entries zero? How do you call it? The identity matrix. Yes, 
So in other words, we'd have six times i. So six i, six times the identity matrix. So we can say then that AB equals six i. Woo! And that'd be it for part A. Part B, hence obtain the matrix A squared B. So we are wanting A squared times B. Well, we know another way of writing this. A squared would be A times A. So really, we've got A times A times B. But what we just worked out in part A was matrix AB. So really, we've got A times AB. And what did AB work out to be? Perfect. Harry was saying that was six times the identity matrix. So it'll be A times six I. But if you think about it, if you have matrix A times I, what's that the same as? A. Brilliant, because anything times by the identity matrix will stay as it is. So 6a times i will just stay as 6a. And again, it's just using that proof that ai equals i. So we know then that a squared b is the same as 6 times matrix a. So we can say that is going to be 6 times, and matrix a was the 2, 2, negative 4, negative 4, 2, negative 4, and 2, negative 1, 5. And if we take that matrix and we're multiplying it by the scalar 6. We're just multiplying every single entry by 6. And that gives us the 12, 12, negative 24 in the top. Middle row, we've got negative 24, 12, negative 24. And the bottom row, 12, negative 6, and 30. And that will be your answer. Try these questions on the identity matrix in the Unit 3 booklet, pages 19 and 20. Check your answers as you go, and as usual, any problems, let me know. Have fun. Bye. Woo! Yeah.